All right, g'day IB psychologists. If you're studying abnormal psychology and you're trying to explain post-traumatic stress disorder, stick around. In this video, we're gonna break down this, what looks like a complicated diagram for the biological etiology of PTSD, but actually it's pretty straightforward. So remember, etiology is the same as explanation. If we're providing a biological explanation for PTSD, we're looking at biological etiologies. Etiology meaning the cause of a disorder or an illness. We're gonna focus on the brain. So abnormalities in the brain, in particular in the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the prefrontal cortex are the most common areas of the brain linked to post-traumatic stress disorder. And this has been seen in, in, in a bunch of studies. Now I was able to find one that I really like, Carl Adel's meta-analysis, because this shows correlations between each of those three parts of the brain. So with just one study, you can explain and link those three uh, particular areas of the brain to symptoms of PTSD directly. Now remember, when we're explaining PTSD, we're thinking about the symptoms. Now, the three general categories of symptoms are arousal, avoidance, and re-experiencing. I remember it like, bah, ah, you know, like it's trauma and scary and post-traumatic stress. So, uh, the three. I would recommend beginning your, uh, your central argument, right, is that here we have these abnormality in the brain, that's the etiology, that could lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, Carla Owl study, that provides a solid foundation of which to base your essay, right? This one here. Now you've built the trust in your reader, you've clearly explained, look, I get it, I get that brain, abnormalities here are a risk factor for PTSD, you can explore that further. And that's what we're doing with these diagrams here. You can say, well, why? Why do some people have differences in the brain in the first place? And that's where Gilbertson's study is really valuable. Gilbertson's study to begin with shows a nice simple correlation between volume in the hippocampus of war veterans and post-traumatic stress disorder. Meaning uh, the smaller the hippocampus, the, um, the worse the PTSD symptoms. And they found that in twins, uh, that went away to war and developed PTSD, they had 10% smaller hippocampi. Now this, all these studies here are uh, included in our revision guide, so you can explain them there. They're also in our flashcard series, and you can find them on the blog as well. So Gilbertson's study is fantastic because it shows that connection between uh, the brain and PTSD, but it provides us with a deeper explanation about where that abnormality comes from in the first place, and that's because genetics. Now, this is really valuable because here I'm adding to my understanding. I'm showing, look, I get it that it's the brain and I know why people have differences in the brain, but I also know that we can't just think about one factor that's gonna influence something as complex as post-traumatic stress disorder. I get it's also genetics. And then you can go even further and go, well, hang on. Are genes the only explanation for why people might have smaller volume in the hippocampus? What about socioeconomic status? You're drawing on your knowledge now from other areas of the course and show that people who have come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds tend to have uh, smaller hippocampi, right? And th that correlational study has been shown in Luby. So socio socioeconomic status has been linked with lower volume in the brain and also people from lower socioeconomic status groups are more at risk for post-traumatic stress disorder. I think that's really important to mention here as well, right? Especially in your essay. Uh, and so, now let's recap, because in just that, what I think is a rather straightforward explanation, you've got multiple layers here to talk about. To begin with, you say, look, abnormalities in the brain, increased risk for PTSD, here is Carla et al's study. Fantastic layer, good foundation, especially if you can remember lots of details and the specific details of Carla et al. Now then you might say, well hang on, this is a correlational study, correlation doesn't mean causation, how do we know it wasn't the PTSD that caused the shrinkage in the brain in the first place? Huh, then you come back and say, well, that's what Gilbertson found out with their twin study. They found that the small hippocampus is the risk factor for PTSD and it was a very cleverly designed, designed study to figure that out. They also found the correlation there between hippocampal volume and PTSD. And then you say, ah, but hang on, uh, that study also shows that it's not just the brain, it's also genes, genes influence the brain. And you go, well, hang on also though, is it just genetics? Can it also, is it just biology or can our environment be inf uh, important here to consider? Yeah, socioeconomic status is a risk factor for PTSD because it's linked with lower brain volume. Okay, so people from different social status backgrounds. Now, here you're seeing that I always come back to the what, how, why, but, right? What's the relationship? How does the relationship exist? Why does it exist, but? 
And this is a detailed explanation of behavior. This is psychology. This is what we're hoping you'll get by the end of the course, that you can take something like PTSD and you realize that, yeah, there's one factor here that's probably gonna have an influence, but that's not the single cause. There's all these other different variables to consider as well. Now, here's what my, I let my students do this in year one, uh, and that is they say, look, it's the brain causes PTSD, but it's also socioeconomic status. Here's Garrison's study. The problem with that is it doesn't show the interaction between these variables. So if you can say this equals this, but and your counter argument is linked directly to your central argument, you're gonna score much higher marks in critical thinking. All right, now I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you're just watching this passively and trying to take that all in just by me talking, it's probably not gonna work. Get a pen and paper, get your notes, get the textbooks out, start diagramming, start writing the stuff down. And in the exams, I really recommend using this model to plan your essay. And in fact, I diagram this stuff all the time when I'm writing resources to make sure that I'm laying out the information in this nice sequential approach so students can understand the basics and then take it deeper. All right, uh, coming up next, the cognitive etiologies of PTSD. Uh, and uh, we're gonna look at the same sort of relationships here. Cheers, good luck.